Banjo-Kazooie is without a doubt one of the best platformers for the N64, and although some people consider it to be a total ripoff of Super Mario 64, these people can kindly shut the fuck up now. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. It shares some elements, but the game can stand on its own two feet as a very stellar platformer, and one of the best out there. One you should have purchased by now. Come on, do it. It won't take you very long. Yeah, tell you what, I'll even wait. <laughs> Buy it! I mean, um, shit, I lost my composure. With that in mind, let's get into my review. Banjo-Kazooie follows, well, Banjo and Kazooie, a bear and a bird. It's an average day, they're sleeping, and Banjo's sister is on her way so they can go on an adventure together, but our main villain has something else in mind, which is great because I have a feeling the game would be a lot more boring without a villain or plot. Grunty kidnaps Banjo's sister, Tootie, as a part of her evil scheme to make herself smexy. That bitch. Yeah. So Banjo-Kazooie set out to Grunty's lair to save Banjo's sister and take down Grunty. The story itself isn't anything special, but what makes it great is the characters and the dialogue they spew forth, because it's hilarious. The writing is actually really good. Each character you come across has a really distinct personality, whether it's Kazooie and Bottle's constant bickering or Grunty's god-awful rhymes. All things considered, the story is pretty good in my opinion, and I applaud the writing. That's me applauding. Deal with it. Banjo-Kazooie is a platformer. A platformer with obvious inspiration from Super Mario 64. Not copying it per se, in my opinion, but building upon what it did and making it feel like its own game. As Banjo, you can run, jump, punch, ground pound, fire eggs, well, technically Kazooie does that, but whatever, and platform. Woo! While doing these various moves, you're on a quest to collect jiggies and notes scattered across the various worlds. The jiggies and notes you collect are used to unlock new worlds so you can get more jiggies and notes and eventually take on Grunty and save your sister. Now the game plays very well. Platforming felt very solid. Not loose or awkward, no bullshit moments. It all worked really well. The difficulty has a gradual climb, so you don't have to worry about a sudden ass kicking. In fact, some of the early areas are stupidly easy, but the later stages are quite challenging, so if that bothers you, oops, it's not my fault. For the record, I didn't make the game. One thing I really liked about the game were the stages, each one looking completely different and having a different atmosphere and containing a different feel and different gameplay elements to go along with that different feel. It made going to each new world more fun because you knew you weren't in for that exact same routine. I guess the best way to sum up the gameplay is... It's a lot of fun. It's an overall great platformer with few flaws in my mind. But I found some, because that's what I do. The camera had moments where it was bad and made things hard to see. Of course, a lot of platformers on the N64 were like that, but, you know, it's worth bringing up. I also found it very annoying that in the original N64 version of the game, if you died in a level, you had to recollect every single note. That was hell! Granted, this is the 360 version, so that's not an issue, thank god, but I just wanted to bring that up. It's a painful memory, I wanted to share. All in all though, the gameplay was fantastic, it's a ton of fun to play through, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Graphically, this game looks pretty damn good. It looked amazing when it first came out, but even now the game looks great. It's vibrant and colorful with levels that represent lots of different styles and feels. Characters animate well, it runs at a smooth frame. I think the graphics look great. The game really manages to shine in the sound department though. The music, for starters, is amazing. I've had these songs stuck in my head since the game first came out on the N64. Every song for each respective area perfectly fits the tone, and one really cool thing about the music is that it would change if you were to go underwater or in a different portion of the level, and I always thought that was really cool. Now, the game doesn't really have any voice acting, but the sound effects are priceless. I'm sure there are some who got really annoyed by them, which I can understand, but I personally love them all, even if you didn't end up hearing the same ones over and over and over and over again, I felt the presentation overall was very impressive. The game manages to look great as well as sound great, which is a win-win for the record. All in all, Banjo-Kazooie is a fantastic platformer. It's one of my personal favorites from the N64, and in my opinion, this game is timeless. While 
I do prefer Super Mario 64 in some aspects. I would easily put this game right beside Super Mario 64 as my favorite platformer of all time. So Banjo-Kazooie gets a 4.5 out of 5.